haven't done a reel review in a while, so I thought I'd do a, a review of this ultralight Shimano reel. It's fairly new to the market. It is an FX1000FC. For a long time, Shimano has made their very low-end reels of decent quality and durability. When I saw that Shimano had come out with this new model a while back, uh, kind of had it in the back of my mind that I ought to pick one up and try it out and see what I think about it and take a look at the inside of it. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Shimano's made a lot of really budget-friendly reels that anybody could afford just about, and they hold up well. They're not always up-to-date as far as being modern, and that's where this FX 1000 FC kind of fills the void there between extreme low budget and mid price reels but it has some modern features on it that I think a lot of people would enjoy. So Shimano's made a model called a IX 1000R for years. It's a zero ball bearing spinning reel with a rear drag setup and it has a quick fire trigger to open the bail. This thing's been out for years and they're very durable and they're fairly lightweight for the size of them. There's a few things I, I'm not real big on. It's a 4.1 to 1 gear ratio, so it's not a very fast reel. There are no ball bearings in it, which that's debatable. I'm not dead set against plastic bushings in reels. There's some situations where it actually makes a lot of sense. Salt water being one of them. You don't have to worry about cheap bearings failing. So it's not always a bad thing in my book if you've got plastic bushings instead of ball bearings. The IX1000R also had the quick fire trigger for the bail opening on it. I'm not big on those. They're kind of bulky and they get in my way, but a lot of people do like that. And because of that quick fire trigger, it had a self-centering and a reverse, which I don't like at all because no matter what position the reel is in, it's going to go all the way back until the bail has centered for the next cast. There's a lot of play in the anti reverse on it. And some people don't like the rear drags. Rear drags are usually very smooth, but they're kind of bulky and they stick out in the back. A lot of people just don't like those. But the reels themselves are long lasting, they're very durable, and there's really not a whole lot to go wrong with them. And I think that's why they've been making them so long. Shimano decided to kind of upgrade their extremely low end products, and they came out with a reel called a FX 1000 FB. It was a 4.6 to 1 gear ratio, so that got the speed up just a little bit. That model had one ball bearing and it used a gear and paw anti-reverse so it wasn't an infinite anti-reverse that really bothers some people it's not a big deal to me personally but there is a little back play on the anti-reverse on those reels and it was just a good entry level reel it's fairly durable it feels a little cheap you can definitely tell it's not a high-end reel that kind of brings us to where we're at now. They've come out with this FX 1000 FC, which is a 5.0 to 1 gear ratio. So it's a, a fairly quick reel. And then it's got a 2 plus 1 bearing setup, which means there's two ball bearings. There's one on the pinion gear, and there's one on one side of the main drive gear. And if you're behind the reel, looking at it from above, it's on the left-hand side, where most people have their reel set up for left-handed reeling. That's where the ball bearing is on the main drive gear on that side. And there's also a needle roller bearing, which is the plus one bearing. That means that it has a needle roller bearing for infinite anti-reverse, which is a, a really big deal to me that Shimano is starting to put infinite anti-reverse on their really extremely low budget reels. It also has a nice large line roller on the bail itself, which is nice. It helps prevent line twist a little bit. Shimano took the Sienna, which is kind of a mid-priced reel. It gets in the 30 plus dollar range. They took that reel's body and went with a matte finish instead of the more glossy finish on the Sienna. The Sienna has one extra ball bearing. It's got one on each side of the main drive gear. Other than that, these two reels are virtually identical. The FX 1000 and the Sienna 1000. In fact, the main drive gear and the pinion gear are the exact same part number and so is the needle roller bearing and the main drive gear bearing and the pinion bearing are the same on both reels. The only difference between the reels as far as mechanically goes is the Sienna added an extra ball bearing on the right hand side of the main drive gear and the FX1000 uses a plastic bushing in that position instead. Other than that they're basically the same reel and the FX1000 will run you anywhere from $10 to $15 less than the Sienna. We'll go ahead and 
open this package up and take a look at the reel, take a look at the inside of the reel, see how it's made, what its materials are like on the internal parts, and see exactly what kind of reel Shimano is producing in the $20 price range. Mine's in a clamshell, so I'll have to cut the plastic and pull this thing out of here and take a look at it. So right off the bat, it has a nice handle. It's made out of metal for a reel that's coming in one cent shy of the $20 price range. At, at most retailers, you get in a metal handle. That's really nice right off the bat. Most of them are plastic in this price range. So we've got a nice metal handle and I really like the grip on this too. It has a rubbery texture to it and it's a little oversized, which is nice for me. I have big fingers. So I, I like the grip on this for ultralight reel. It's kind of a large size grip. The body is nice. It has a sleek design to it. The anti-reverse switch though is in kind of a tough place to get to for me and it's really small. I don't really like that. That's the way that Shimano has gone on most of their reels now. Most of the anti-reverse switches are off to the side. They're not centered and they're very small. So it's a little hard to get to and I actually do use my on and off quite a bit on that. I realize a lot of people don't. So that may or may not affect your decision one way or another, but most of the Shimano reels are made this way now anyway. The spool itself is very nice. The drag feels good on it, and it's got a nice beveled edge on the front side where the line comes off the spool to help some as the line transitions from the spool to the rod. These are made in Malaysia, and the body, I actually like the matte finish on the body. The body is pretty rigid also. It's a graphite reel. It's not going to be as rigid as a metal bodied reel, but it has nice rigidity to it, especially for such a small reel. This being an ultralight reel, it should be plenty. I'll start the disassembly by removing the drag knob and taking a look at that and we'll take a look at the drag washers and what kind of setup it has there. The first thing I noticed on the bottom of the spool is that it has a metal clicker and I like that with an aluminum spool like this one has because it makes a nice sound. That's not really that important but I do like the way that these sound. The drag knob is plastic and it has a metal spring that does a clicking sound as you adjust the, the drag on it. And the drag knob itself is actually spring loaded. There's a spring inside the drag that you can see in person. You probably won't be able to see it on this video though, but it's in there. I'm just removing the spring that holds the drag washers in there so we can take a look at the drag washers. This has a two drag washer stack with a lot of surface area on the drag washers and the friction material is old Japanese felt which makes an excellent and very smooth low end drag and there's enough surface area on this that it's advertised as having seven pounds of drag on it and I believe that's accurate. I tightened this down quite a bit and checked it and it's really tight when you crank it down. But for most people who are ultralight fishing you're going to use light lines so you want the smooth end to definitely be on the lower side of the setting. This setup should give you that. The drag clicker gear is made out of plastic and it has some spool washers on top. It also has a metal plate on the bottom that is tabbed to fit inside of the gear so it will keep the gear in good shape as far as the flat sides that keep it from turning. In order to remove the rotor, you're going to have to first take out a screw that keeps the rotor nut from turning. So you just take that screw out. You'll need a 12 millimeter wrench in order to get the rotor nut loose. And it's a standard right hand thread rotor nut. It's not a left hand threaded rotor nut. So in order to loosen it, you'll turn it counterclockwise. Then you can remove the rotor by pulling straight up on it. The rotor itself is made out of graphite. It's lightweight and it has good rigidity to it also. Now I'm going to take out the anti-reverse bearing. The way that this one is put together is really, really nice. A lot of the anti-reverse bearings are kind of a pain to get in and out. The way that they're mounted in there is tricky sometimes and it's easy to have the whole thing fall apart on you. This one's made into one unit and you'll see four screws on the unit and there's one screw you don't want to take out. So only take out the three that I'm going to show you and it will keep the whole bearing assembly together as one unit so your needles don't fall out. I really like this design. I haven't run across one before made like this and I think this is something that Shimano does. There's no little springs to get lost for the anti-reverse mechanism. 
the whole unit stays together as long as you don't take that one screw to take the case that the bearing is in apart. So it's really easy to get this whole unit out without any kind of fear of it all coming apart on you. Once you have the anti-reverse bearing completely out, then you can take out the spacer sleeve that goes between the pinion gear and the anti-reverse bearing, and you can pull the whole pinion gear out at this point. It'll pull straight out of the front really easily. The ball bearing on the pinion is a double sealed bearing that rolls really smoothly. It's a nice little ball bearing. And the pinion gear itself is made out of brass, which is kind of hard to find sometimes on really budget minded reels. A lot of the budget reels will use a zinc alloy pinion gear and main drive gear. This one uses a brass pinion gear. Now we're gonna remove the side plate of the body and there's four screws that need to be removed in order to take the side plate off. I'm just gonna speed the video up through the screw removal process. The three main screws that hold the side plate on are all the same length, so you don't have to worry about those getting mixed up. The fourth screw that holds the rear cover on is a different length. The single ball bearing that's on the main drive gear is on the side plate, and it's another nice feeling, very smooth ball bearing that's double sealed. I'm going to use the main drive gear to rotate the oscillation gear to where the arm is back further so I can unscrew the arm from the spool shaft and remove the spool shaft. Now the main drive gear can come out and it appears to be some sort of a cast zinc alloy main drive gear. The cast alloy gears aren't as smooth as the machined ones typically but this reel has a, a good feeling to it. You can feel a little bit of gear meshing. It's not bad at all, but it's not gonna be nearly as smooth as some of the really expensive reels, and you shouldn't expect it to be for a $20 reel. That smoothness doesn't translate into catching more fish or anything, but it is a, a lower quality gear than what you'll see on some of the high-end reels. But as I previously mentioned, the pinion gear is brass and the main drive gear is a zinc alloy I'm pretty sure because of the weightiness to it it's not pure aluminum but because those two metals are dissimilar you'll get a longer wear life with the dissimilar metals they tend to wear better when two metals are dissimilar than they do when they're the same so on the really budget reels where you have a zinc pinion gear and a zinc alloy main drive gear they'll wear a lot quicker than one with two dissimilar metals now I'm just taking out the oscillation arm slider and it's just a pin that holds this whole assembly together. Behind that there is another die cast zinc alloy oscillation gear that runs off the main drive gear to do the spool oscillation. And also in the other side of the reel body there is a plastic bushing that holds the other end of the main drive gear and this plastic bushing has little tabs on it and if you do not get those little tabs lined up in the body uh, facing down towards the outside of the body of the reel if you don't get those tabs in their slots your reel is going to feel real clunky it's going to feel like something's wrong on the inside so you have to make sure you get those tabs lined up when you put the bushing back into the reel body if they don't line up you'll feel it right away and you'll have to take it all apart and get this bushing back in there the way it's supposed to be the last little part that's left in the body is a bushing for the rear side of the pinion gear it's a small plastic bushing and i'm going to tell you this thing is tricky to get in and out of the reel because there's a little rail made into the body of the reel and then there's a notch cut out into this plastic bushing that rides on that rail so it's really hard to get it in there it's so small to get this in there the right way is a little difficult it's not impossible i took it out and put it back in but it might take you a minute or two just to get everything lined up just right so that the bushing will then slide into the housing of the body but you just need to pay attention to the rail that's made into the body and position the bushing with the notch that's cut into that bushing over that rail and then push the whole assembly back into the housing that it sits in.
So that's the whole disassembly process. The assembly process would be the exact reverse of this. If you need to get one put back together, you could watch this video and get one put back together, I think, or I hope I did a good enough job where you can tell how everything goes together. Once again, this reel is gonna be almost identical to the Sienna in the 1000 size. That's the new Sienna, not the older ones. The only difference between the two reels from a mechanical standpoint is the one extra bearing that the Sienna has. So if you're following along on this video, it would work just as well on this FX 1000 as it would on the Sienna 1000. Just my initial impressions of the reel is that it has a nice feel to it. It doesn't feel overly cheap. It feels like a quality reel that you're getting for a $20 price. I'd say it's a good buy for that reason alone. I will tell you one thing I do not like about the new ultralight size Shimano reels. That is where they've made this sweep back leg that sweeps back way too soon and way too quick for me personally and the way that I hold my reels and the size of my fingers. My knuckles rub on these newer body styles really bad to the point where it's actually very annoying and I won't use them. Uh, I bought this reel. I think my kids can use it. I mostly bought it just because I wanted to give it a good tear down and look through and see how it was made. The knuckle rubbing thing, that's just me. You know, I realize a lot of people's fingers aren't as big as mine. A lot of people don't hold their reels exactly the same way as I do. But I would recommend if you're looking at any of the newer body styles of the Shimano reels that have that really swept back design, get one in your hand on a rod the way you would fish it and work it quite a bit like you would if you were fishing just to see if that's going to be a problem for you or not if it is you might want to look at something else the quality on this reel is very good for twenty dollars i'd say it's a no-brainer if the knuckle rubbing doesn't bother you uh, the only other thing on it that i don't particularly care for but it's not a huge deal is the the positioning and the size of the anti-reverse i don't like them on the newer shimanos that's just how they're doing now. That's that's what you get. And I also realize that most people don't switch their anti-reverse on and off as, as often as I do. So for most people, it's not a huge deal. And for me, it's not a huge deal, honestly. It, the, the biggest thing about this reel is just that really swept back spacing on that leg and my knuckles rubbing. I just can't use these reels because I get sore. It rubs so bad on my fingers, so I, I'm not messing with that. But I know for my kids or, or my wife, they could use this reel. My wife uses one of the newer Shimano's with that same design. It's a, it's a higher end reel than this one, and it doesn't affect her one bit. It's not a problem at all. So it's just something that I would say you might want to take a look at just to make sure if you haven't used one of these newer design Shimano body styles with that sweeping back of the leg there. You might want to get one in hand and test it out before you decide to purchase one. Other than that, though, I mean, they're using good materials. They're using pretty standard stuff with the brass pinion gear and the die-cast zinc gear on the main drive. I'm not opposed to plastic bushings. In some ways, there's less maintenance to them. I mean, they're not a terrible thing in my book. So I think for a $20 reel, Shimano has really packed a lot into this reel for the money and one other thing if you do service your own reels that design on the anti-reverse setup on the bearing for that that needle bearing those things can be such a pain on some reels i really like the way that this case comes out as one unit and you don't have to worry about the needles falling out of it or anything as you're taking it apart i think that was a really nice move on their part to come up with that design so i hope you found this review helpful um, I hope the disassembly portion of it will be helpful to somebody if they're working on one of their own. And if you got any comments or anything, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll talk to y'all next time.